Hey everybody, this is Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell coming to you with another Okla Proud interview. Hope everybody is safe and sound, washing your hands. Uh, come May 1st, uh, most of us around the state of Oklahoma can get a haircut. I certainly will be, uh, so I apologize for this. Uh, but uh, we are doing what we need to do to bend the curve uh, and to re help reopen this economy in a responsible way. So great job uh, to each and every one of you. Uh, today, I have someone that's, that's really on the front lines in a lot of ways uh, to, to what we are dealing with, this crisis, uh, when it comes to feeding uh, people around the state of Oklahoma, 4 million people. Uh, there's a lot of people hurting. Uh, we know that, uh, and it's going to take a long time for us to kind of put those pieces back together. Uh, but I have Kathy ne uh, Neslin uh, with the Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma. She's the Director of Communication and Marketing. Kathy, thank you for being with us. Well, thank you for asking me to join you. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit uh, about yourself um, and, 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 you know, kind of the definition. I mean, when, when we say regional food bank, most people, I think, knows what that, know what that means. But tell us a little bit about yourself when you started and a little bit about the Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma. You bet. Um, I've been at the Regional Food Bank for just under three years, so uh, happy to be a part of such a great organization. And in my role is about uh, anything you see outreaching, any public relations, any marketing, all of our social all fall under the area that I oversee. Uh, the Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma uh, was founded in 1980. So we are actually celebrating or acknowledging our 40th anniversary this year. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So we, we had some things planned, but those have been put aside as we deal, have been dealing with um, as the rest of the state in the response to the COVID-19 virus. So the Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma serves 53 of the 77 counties in the state. So we serve all of central and western Oklahoma. Our yeah. service area covers about 48,000 square miles. So yeah. we have a quite a, a fleet of uh, 11 semi trucks that yeah. uh, push that food out to our partner agencies and different communities throughout our service area. Fantastic. So uh, the, the, the pandemic happens. Uh, April is basically closed, as I've, as I've said, really March and April, uh, most things were closed. Immediately, people started filing unemployment claims. Uh, that is a still real issue in the state of Oklahoma that, that I'm working on every single day. And I just want Oklahomans to know we're not going anywhere. We're going to help you. But that really added a lot of pressure on your all system. So, you know, for, from when this started, kind of what has been the process with, with the regional food bank? What, what, what have you guys been uh, going through? Well, in the last uh, week of March, <clears throat> when things really started ramping up within the state, we went into what we call our disaster response mode, where our primary focus becomes providing emergency food boxes to our partner agency and uh, people in need of food assistance. And we have seen an uptick in need, uh, anywhere from 30% to 60% at certain sites and people needing food assistance. And we anticipate, although the economy is opening back up, we anticipate that need to maintain for a while. Uh, to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, so you pack, you, the food comes in, I'm, 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 you, I'm, you're in one of your volunteer centers right now. Yes. Um, and, and so you have people come in, and I, we'll talk a little bit about the volunteer needs that you have here in a minute, but tell me how that process works. So you, these volunteers come in, you, you, you package them up, and you mentioned your, your partners. Yes. Uh, the partner organizations that you have. So you know, you have a big warehouse, you have that volunteers come in, they package things up, and then that process of, of getting things to partners and into communities, how does that work? We partner with about 320 uh, what we call community-based partner agencies, and it's anywhere from uh, food pantries to churches to um, uh, soup kitchens, anywhere where there's being assistance provided, and so they go through a pretty serious vetting system to um, uh, process, I'm sorry, to become a partner agency of ours. During this pandemic, we've been very fortunate that about 300 of those remain open and continue to pro uh, provide food assistance. So what they do is they order food from us online and uh, we package that and, and put it on pallets and get it shipped out to, via our uh, our fleet system uh, out to the partner agencies. So uh, when we went into disaster response mode, it became an essential staff uh, opportunity only. We try to keep our volunteer center open, practicing say, social distancing, and we just felt like we couldn't meet our own standards for that. And so we had to close the volunteer center down to public volunteers. And so our staff then turned into 
doing what the volunteers would have done, and that was uh, packing emergency food boxes. Yeah, demonstrating the Oklahoma standard is what they were doing. Uh, <laughs> and, Most and definitely. I you, yes, and well, I know you have National Guard uh, now helping you. Uh, talk a little bit about that, how the National Guard has, has really kind of come in and to, to really help fill the need. Oh, it, it most definitely has. We have a 25 Air National Guard that joined us last week, and they are incredibly uh, so well trained and disciplined and polite and uh, just are well oiled machine uh, as far as their productivity. They're setting records right now in the number of boxes and pallets that they're packing. And we are just so appreciative to have them uh, on staff to give us an opportunity to turn and look at some other things that we need to be focused on. But uh, we've got them for at least 30 days and, and we're loving it. Yeah, yeah, they, they are some of the best uh, uh, in the state of Oklahoma, some, an organization certainly to be very, very proud of, all of our military um, uh, branches that we have. So uh, we know the process, we, we know that again, you're, you're doing what you can do without all of those volunteers, National Guard is helping. Uh, any examples of being innovative through this time? You know, I'm, I'm asking a lot of the folks that we're talking to, we may be entering a new world here where a lot of the things that we've been doing uh, everything from Zoom calls to uh, our marketing efforts, digital efforts uh, may become a norm for us um, in this new world that we're coming into. As the you know, director of communications and marketing, you may, there may be a few things that you're doing at the regional food bank uh, to be innovative that you may, you may keep around. You know, I think we were in a meeting this morning talking about what have we learned so far in the last month, what have we learned and what will we, that we've learned, what will we take forward with us as if we get to a new normal in the state. And so that was a really interesting discussion. Uh, some of the things that we've seen innovative wise as far as our partner agencies are how they've adjusted to continue to provide food assistance, but practice social distancing, not only yeah, keeping their right. own yeah, their own volunteers and staff safe, but also the clients and it, households that they serve. And so many of them have gone to a drive-by distribution. And for instance, mm -hmm. like at um, the uh, Food and Resource Center and more is one of our programs. And that typically is a, a client choice. And so people come in, they can come every 30 days, they could do a little intake, and then they literally set up like a small grocery store. And so they take a grocery cart and they shop the produce and protein, and then they do the canned goods and the fresh bread and all that. Well, that does not, we tried that for a couple of days with just limiting number of people and it, it just wasn't working well. So we went through a, uh, into a drive-by. So people stay in their vehicles. We still have a check-in process, but our staff has stood out in rain and they've stood out in some cold, windy days. Um, and, but those car loads of people or a household is getting anywhere from 70 to 75 pounds of food. And it's everything from fresh produce and frozen protein, eggs, milk, uh, shelf stable food. So they're getting um, a good amount of food, but there's many of the agencies that are still open that that's how we're doing our distribution is just a drive by. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think there'll be some drive by. Yeah. Uh, a drive-by process into the future for sure. Um, you also mentioned a really uh, interesting, uh, a new USDA program. You know, there's been a lot of stories of uh, just wasted milk and wasted food uh, right now because they can't get that into uh, food banks uh, fast enough, but it sounds like we have a solution to that with a the, with the new USDA program. I wanted you to mention that. Yes, it's called a Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, so CFAP. The USDA loves their acronym, so it's yes, what it's, it's known as. They do. So CFAP is a, a two-pronged program. It's going to provide assistance to those farmers and ranchers who are, have that uh, abundance of whatever they produce on hand, and, and the restaurants aren't open to take it, and the schools aren't open to take it, and so they they some are just having to you know, turn it over in the field or pour it out if it's milk. And so the USDA will help them on that with the CPAP program. And then we have registered with USDA to receive up to four and a half million pounds of that refrigerated product. Four and a half million pounds just for Oklahoma. Just for the, our service area. Oh. And so uh, that's every month through December. Okay. So we'll find out next week what we've been approved to receive. And we've had to... Uh, get some uh, refrigerated reefer trailers here so that we have uh, the room to put the excess in, but then we'll turn around and get that back out to the uh, Oklahomans who need it. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you know, you, you, you really have so many different 
organizations and industries involved when it comes to the regional food bank of Oklahoma. You mentioned truck drivers. I mean, your, 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 your drivers, how many, how many trucks in the fleet? We have uh, 11, 11 semis. 11 semis in the fleet. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, and again, they, they probably have not been taking a whole lot of days off. No, we've started doing Saturday deliveries and um, our operations head said if we needed to do a delivery on a Sunday, we would make that happen as well. So all we're trying to do is just to make sure that, you know, the agencies have the food that they need to be able to get the food out to the increased need of uh, folks. That's great. Um, website uh, for people, again, I know right now you're still not, we still can't uh, use volunteers, correct, in your, in your facilities, but, but do, you, do you have a timeline on, on that? Uh, I really don't. Not right now. The state is just starting to open up the economy again. We're looking for a couple key triggers for us. Okay. Uh, when we're talking, you know, we would still um, have social distancing guidelines and following those. And, and once we do welcome the public back in. So I would say look for a notice from us in the next couple weeks or so on that. But we did launch a virtual volunteer program. So if people want to go to our website at rfbo.org and they can look for the virtual volunteer program. It's just a way that people can stay engaged with us and share information that we send out for, uh, on our social media channels. So it's a way for us just to keep engaged with that important part of our volunteer system. Oh, I love that. I'm so, I'm great. I'm glad you're doing that. Um, so again, the website one more time. Is rfbo.org. rfbo.org. Kathy, thank you so much for, for being with us today. Again, the, these, are, these are interviews that certainly have, have impacted me. Just good Oklahomans give me a little bit more pride in the state that I certainly love and, and uh, certainly try to sell around the country and around the world of how great of a place this is. Any final thoughts for, for uh, watchers and listeners today? I just, if anyone who's watching this uh, is in need of food assistance or knows someone who is, I just want to reassure them that the food is available. They just need to go to our website, rfbo.org slash get help, and they can plug in their zip code and it'll populate the food pantries nearest uh, their address that they can go visit. And they can call us as well at 405-972-1111. Great. Katie, thank you so much for doing this and uh, really look forward to championing what you guys do into the future. Again, we're not going anywhere. I know you're not either. It's a 365, 24-7 operation. Again, thank you so much for doing it. Thanks for having me.